There's a famous passage where the Buddha says that admiral friendship is the whole of the holy life. Ananda had come to him and commented that, gee, it's really amazing how much you have to depend on our friends and fellows in the practice. It's half of the holy life. And the Buddha said, no, it's the whole of the holy life. But at the same time, there's a passage where he says, Atahi Atano Nato, the self is its own mainstay. So how do we put that together? Well, first it's because of good friends like the Buddha, and he calls himself an admirable friend, that we know that there is such a thing as a practice, that there is an Eightfold Path. Think of all that he went through in order to find the path that we don't have to go through. He didn't have a tradition that told him there's a path to the end of suffering, there's a way to the deathless. All he had was his conviction that life wouldn't be worth living unless you could find a happiness that wasn't affected by aging, illness, and death. And he couldn't live with himself unless he actually gave it the best try possible. We, however, have the advantage. There's the Buddha, there are the noble disciples who've passed the teaching on to us. So that's how admirable friendship is the whole of the path. We, we have the example of good friends. We have the support of good friends. One time, one of the Buddha's cousins, who had ordained as a monk, was getting discouraged in his practice, and the Buddha says, I'm here to help. And so we have his teachings. And there's that voice behind them. These are here to help you. What they do, of course, is they point you inside. That's where the self has to take over. We hear, of course, that there's a lot of teaching about not-self. But the Buddha has a place for self as well, in the sense that you have to learn how to depend on yourself and look within yourself for the strength that you need. Because the world has a lot of slings and arrows to throw at you. But each of us has the qualities inside that if we work on them, if we develop them, will give us a true mainstay, something that can't be touched by those slings and arrows. And it's to be touched right here in the mind. As the Buddha said, it's to be seen with a body. An interesting turn of phrase. But what it means is that right here where you sense your body right now, that's where you will see the deathless. And it will be a total experience. It will just be a an idea. That's to be found in here. And the qualities that lead to that can be found within the mind. This is why Ananda taught at one point that even though we are practicing to overcome conceit, we have to make use of conceit. Conceit in here being the sense that if other people can do this, so can I. They're human beings. I'm a human being. Why can't I do this? That gives you the confidence that you can handle this path. Then there's a self. And the Buddha calls the self as a governing principle. That's to help keep you on the path, to remind you that when you're tempted to just give up when things are hard, you remind yourself, I started on this path because I wanted to find a deathless happiness. And if I give up and go back to what I was contending myself with before, do I really love myself? Is it really fitting? So there are these ways in which you think about yourself and learn how to depend on yourself that are an important part of the path. So don't go throwing away yourself too quickly. Find which parts of yourself, which sense of self within you, which skills you can develop within you you can depend on. And in the beginning, they may not seem all that dependable. We were talking yesterday about 
walking along that path and seeing little plants that look like grass. And you look down and you don't look carefully at them, they're just grass, and you step on them, that's that. But if you look carefully, you see there are all kinds of plants in there. Some are weeds and others are really useful plants. Some are the seedlings of trees. If you look after them, take care of them properly, even these little tiny things here will grow, provide you with fruit, provide you with shade. So keep that in mind as you're working with your concentration, and there are times when it seems difficult. These are little shoots and seedlings that you have to look after. But if you care for them, they'll care for you. It's like that old story of the, the mouse and the lion. There was one day when a lion caught a mouse, and the mouse said, Please, please let me go. Maybe someday I'll have the opportunity to help you, too. And the whole idea was so amusing to the lion that the lion let him go. And then later on the lion was caught in a big net. The mouse came along, saw the lion, and bit all the different lines in the net until the lion was free. So don't go overlooking little tiny things just because they're small. There are lots of examples in the canon. The Buddha said, don't be careless around small fires or small snakes. Because a small fire can turn into a big one. A small snake can have a lot of poison. So don't be careless around little princes. A little prince can grow up. And if you mistreat him when he's small, he's going to remember that. That principle applies to little tiny defilements in the mind, but it also applies to the good things in the mind as well. Whatever amount of concentration, whatever amount of mindfulness you're able to muster. If you look after them, they'll grow. And just because they're not as strong as you'd like right now doesn't mean you throw them away. You've got to nurture them. You've got to care for them. It's like having a weak child. You have to spend extra time looking after the child. But then the child can repay you. So have the confidence that whatever good things you can find in yourself that don't seem all that dependable, you don't see how you're going to make a mainstay out of yourself based on them. And they don't show their potential all at once. If you nurture them, you look after them, they'll grow. How do we know this? Well, part of it is because we have the example of admirable friends, people who have practiced, to show that it is possible. And it's something that doesn't depend on gender or race or what historical period you're in. The Dharma is always there to practice. Here we are, right now. And there's no better time to practice than right now. So have the confidence that this will provide you with the refuge you need. Because as the Buddha said, there is no other refuge. <laughs>